kids miss kulkarni here in this video let's find out how to draw lewis dot structures for covalent compounds and there are many rules and many steps step number 1 we need to find out valence electrons for every element present in that particular molecule valence electrons if you remember are s and p electrons not dnf then we add up all the electrons and we get total number of valence electrons for all the elements in that molecule the next thing is we have to find out which atom is the central atom who is going to be the boss and in this case the atom in the fewest number will be the one as central atom and if we end up having same number of atoms for two elements then what do we do we use the second rule we select the element which is least electronegative as the central atom once we have central atom we are going to put other atoms around that now there are some elements that never want to be central atoms remember those hydrogen fluorine will never ever be a central atom so once we figure out which atom is the central atom we write that and put all the remaining elements around it next step we are going to draw a covalent bond between a central atom and every peripheral atom we can either draw a bond or we can show two electrons per bond after we are done with that we need to check the count of electrons which we have and then using octet rule we start satisfying every element around the central atom until they all are getting eight and if there are of course extra then they are going to be on the central atom now every rule has some exceptions and so is the octet rule so which are the exceptions number 1 element hydrogen can only take maximum two electrons that's it element beryllium only needs four not eight and boron is satisfied with six electrons it's like when you go for all you can eat pizza somebody can be happy with two slices somebody will be happy with four and somebody may need 6 and of course some other people might need 8 let's talk about more strange things even though octet rule says that we have to have 8 electrons sometimes s and p orbitals totally may have more than 8 electron we call this as expanded octet now i just want you all to remember that group 18 elements also may be included in expanded octet sometimes and sometimes when you put electrons around the elements it may happen that some elements may not have eight electrons they might be still hungry for more electrons what happens then electrons are shared that time and a shared pair of electrons forms a double bond or sometimes it may form triple bond too all right let's actually work on some molecule and draw lewis dot structure here is our first molecule h2o water and as you see we have two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom in water now we need to count valence electrons for each of those just like potluck maybe think about hydrogen and oxygen are bringing some food in the form of electrons for potluck so each hydrogen atom is going to bring some number of electrons how do we find out you locate hydrogen in periodic table that comes in group 1 which indicates it has one valence electron so two hydrogen will bring two electrons for our potluck oxygen comes in group number 16 that means valence electrons will be 6 so totally we are going to get 2 plus 6 8 valence electron that's our first step next step is 
we have to find out out of these two elements which one will be the central atom. The one with the least number of atoms will be the central atom. We have two hydrogen and one oxygen so no doubt we are going to have oxygen in the middle a central atom and then we place the two hydrogen atoms on both sides. Step number three what do we do? We draw a bond or we can actually have a shared pair of electrons to indicate that bond between central atom and hydrogen. At this point out of eight we used up four electrons but there are still four remaining and what do we do? We show those four electrons on the top of oxygen. Next step is we are supposed to write down ABX formula. A stands for number of central atoms. In this case we only have one oxygen so that means we only have one A. Then B are the atoms which are surrounding. We have two atoms which are surrounding. That means B is two. And X is the number of electron pairs that are not shared and which are around the central atom. So we got in this case two electron pairs around oxygen. That means X will be two. Let's move on to the next compound, HI. We have one hydrogen and one iodide here. So hydrogen belongs to group number one. It's going to bring one electron. So total will be one from hydrogen. Iodine comes from group number 17. So it has seven electrons. One iodine bringing seven electrons. We end up having eight. So eight is the total number of electrons which we got for our partlet. Now we have to find out the central atom. H and I both have exactly equal number of atoms and in fact we only have two atoms so it doesn't really matter which is in center. We just put H and I side by side and next step is show the electrons between those. Out of eight we used up two electrons. We have six electrons still remaining. Where can we put those? Can we put those around hydrogen? Mm -mm. Hydrogen already has two and that's all it can eat. So remaining electrons are going to go around iodine. And if we put those six, take the total. Total is equal to eight and we are done. We are good. So what is the structure for ABX? It will be A and B. There is no X at all. Let's move on to our next molecule. We have beryllium chloride here. One beryllium and two chloride. So beryllium belongs to group number two. It will bring two electrons each. So total will be two. And chlorine is in group 17. So two chlorines will bring two times seven, 14 electrons. Total of two and 14 is 16. So we have 16 electrons for our partlet. Now out of these two, which atom will be central atom? It is the one with the least number of atoms, obviously beryllium. And we put two chlorines on either side of beryllium. Next step is, we should show the shared pair of electrons between beryllium and chlorine. Out of 16 electrons, we used the four electrons. How many are still remaining? 12 electrons are still remaining and we are going to put those around chlorine till every chlorine has the octet complete. So we have 8 and 8 electrons, total is 16. So we are done. How about writing ABX structure? A is the number of atoms of central atom. We only have one atom, beryllium, so A is 1. B is number of atoms which are around the central atom. So we got two. And how about X? We don't have any unshared electron pairs. So we don't have X. Okay. Here are some more examples. We have Bi3 which has one boron and three iodine. Let's do the count. Each boron is going to bring three electrons because the group number is 13. So that becomes three. 
and each iodine is going to bring 7 electrons. We have 3 iodine, that's 21. The total count is 24 for valence electrons. Out of boron and iodine, which atom is going to be central atom? Obviously, it is boron and we are going to put iodine around that boron. Next step is to put electrons between the two elements. I sometimes call it as shake hands. In a handshake, there are two electrons just like two hands. Alright, what is the next step? After we put two electrons between the two atoms, we are going to put remaining atoms around each of the surrounding atom. So when we do that, what do we have? We have 8, 8 and 8, 8 times 3, 24 electrons. We are good. Now is boron going to be happy? Remember the exception we learned, boron is pretty happy with 6 electrons. So we are done there. What is the ABX formula? The number of central atom is only 1. That's boron. Number of atoms surrounding is 3. And for X, we don't have any spare remaining electrons. So it's going to be simply AB3. Let's move on to the next one. For NCl3, we got 26 as the total number of electrons. And the atom in the middle will be nitrogen. And we're going to have chlorines around it. First thing will be handshake two electrons between both those elements. Then the central atom makes sure that the elements around it gets eight electrons. And at this point, we make sure, take a count again. So we have eight, eight and eight around each chlorine. So we have eight electrons around each of the chlorine. If you count all those, that comes to 24 we had 26 electrons, 24 are being used. That means there are still two electrons which are not actually used for bonding. So these are the spare electrons. Now let's go back to ABX formula. The number of central atom is only one, one nitrogen. Atoms surrounding it are three. We have three chlorines and we do have an electron pair which is not shared with anybody and it's one shared pair. Remember two electrons but one shared pair. So formula is AB3X and let's find out the answer for the last question. Alright, the total count of electrons is 20 and out of CF2H2 carbon is the one which has minimum number of atoms so that's in the middle and then we're going to have fluorine and hydrogen around that. So I'm going to put two fluorines here and two hydrogens, one on the top, one at the bottom. Next step is we're going to have shared pair of electrons, shake handler, and then central atom is going to make sure that we have octate complete for elements which need octate. What about hydrogen? Hydrogen will be happy with these two electrons because that's what the exception says. Let's go back and take the count of electrons and that's exactly 20. So we are done. Now go back and write down ABX formula. How many central atoms? Just one. And how many surrounding atoms? Although they are different atoms, they all are classified as atoms that surround the central atom. So we got totally four atoms that surround A. And there is no electron pair which is not shared. So what do you think? Was it simple and straightforward to draw Lewis dot structure for covalent compounds? Alright guys, I'll see you again in next video. Until then, bye-bye.